Kids is proud to be here in Macon. And we're playing three days for your enjoyment at the fairground. Dope, we're in Savannah. What, are you drunk again? We're in Savannah. Sorry, folks, I meant to say Savannah. Yeah. The circus has come to Savannah. We got quite a show for you. Acrobats, wild animals, cowboys, Indians, death-defying athletes, and... The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Are you all right? I'm fine, Aunt Helen. Don't you worry, baby sister. Aunt Helen will look after you. The presence of mine enemies. Now anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You can get your tickets at Essence Path, Jasper's, and Highway 46, for Leo's Market right here in town. Children under 12, accompanied by paid adults, will come in on one single ticket. If boy likes to be good to those who are good to him. There is no free why anyone should miss the circus. And remember, folks, we may never be back here again. The circus ain't exactly for the future, you know. And one of these days, some of you young people are going to have to tell your kids about the day the circus came to town because there won't be one. Duke Royal, this here's my circuit. That's nice, real nice. You married? Yeah. By any chance your father chief police in this town? <laughs> Does he run the bank? Your boyfriend race a crazy car? <laughs> Ain't got no boyfriend. Uh, now how would you like to drive out anytime between now and Saturday to the fairgrounds? Trailer three, that's mine. Go! You'll have us a party. Huh? We can get you some free tickets this time. Go! Sure hope I see you. Go! Ain't got no car. Well, red one for crying out loud. Don't you like parties? We all loved him, and he loved everybody and everything. About the only thing that Horace didn't like was Elvis Presley and Oprah. <laughs> live and let live. But I do want to say a few things about Horace's daughter, Mary. In a day and age when some kids have no respect for their elders, no respect for authority, and no respect for the law, Mary took care of her father ever since his beloved wife, Marjorie, passed away some 20 years ago this May. Now, Horace wasn't a well man. He never knew when his heart would just give out. And it was Mary's devotion to him, day in and day out, that kept him going, that gave him a reason to live. So today, we are paying our respects to Horace but I'd also like to pay my respects to you, Mary, baby sister, as we all know you best. Reverend, it was just a beautiful service. Thank you, ma'am. Well, Mary and I appreciated it so much. God bless you both. Oh, thank you. I'm very sorry, Mary, honey. Thank you, Mr. Salveson. I know you'll miss him. You used to take him up such pretty trays, always a cloth napkin. That was a lovely touch. I'll see you at the house, Miss Bailey. It'll be nice to have you visit. Thank you. Come along, dear.
to sell the house. I don't want you there all alone. Now, tomorrow morning, you call the lawyer first thing. I will. You can come live with me in Hattiesburg. I promise you, honey, you'll never be alone. I don't mind being alone. I'm old enough to take care of myself. Well, you took good care of your father, all right, and your mother before that. But when it comes to yourself, Mary Grace, you haven't done too well. Thank you, Aunt Helen. Well, you never got a husband. You never married either. Well, in my day, being a spinster was elegant. Nowadays, it's weird. Look, Aunt Helen, a circus. Fine sight on a day like today. Stop, please. It's okay. No, no, you go ahead, please. Uh, much obliged. You know, Mary, the new convalescent home on 14th Avenue is looking for an administrator. I think I've spent enough time walking up and down stairs taking care of the ill. This is all on one floor. Cream and sugar. Oh. Uh, frankly, Mary, I've always thought you made a fine library. Standing behind a checkout desk, whispering real nice to Cream over, please. The world's a jungle, Mary. We just want to keep you safe. You're very delicate, dear. And I promised your father I'd keep an eye on you. Oh, Mary, are you going back into teaching, dear? She hasn't decided. We don't think she's accredited anymore. It's been years since she got her degree. You taught English, didn't you? Mary never actually taught. She was trained to teach civics. However, they don't teach civics nowadays. They teach you how to have sex. This cake is delicious. Did you make it? Yes, she did. Did she make it after her father died? No. I baked it several weeks earlier and froze it. Oh. Mary bakes like no one I've ever known. Everything is so moist. She always adds one egg more than the recipe calls for. It's just cake, really. Mary. You should notice Mary's garden before you leave. No one in the world can get marigolds as large as hers. And for some odd reason, her petunias never wilt in the hottest sun. What's her secret? Fertilizer. Is that all? How often do you fertilize? Mary, Miss Sharp asked you a question. What? How often do you fertilize? What? Your marigolds. Excuse me. I'm going into the kitchen to fill my silver coffee pot, which I polish once every two weeks. I fertilize the flowers once a month. I have a B.A. in government. The house is spotless. You could eat off the floors, literally. If you think that cake is moist, I make a killer custard. I grind my own beans. Any questions about anything? <laughs> You scared me. What are you doing? It's after midnight. I was going to leave this near your bed so you'd find it in the morning. And Helen, I'm leaving. Leaving for where? Well, you may not believe this, but I'm looking for the nearest jungle. Do you mean the Everglades? Are you going to Florida? Do you worry about me, Aunt Helen? The worst that can happen is I'll be torn and mutilated and returned in manila envelopes. Oh, 
never seen you act this way. I feel like screaming. I feel like screaming so loud they could hear me in Biloxi. Well, why don't you? Aunt Helen, I'm even afraid to scream. A few announcements of local interest. The monthly meeting of the Savannah Garden Club on Tuesday has been moved to the home of Beatrice Banks. Yeah? Will well, Beatrice Banks can garden without me Tuesday. I am not going to plant petunias and stare at Beatrice Banks' thighs this week. Thank you. God, Mary, you're mad enough to boil eggs. diner in Georgia at 2 o'clock in the morning to tell him that it, uh, it wasn't his. <laughs> well, I I've never met him. I'm looking for a job. Oh, well, uh, why don't you go sit over that table over there and start with the typing test? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, lady. You looking for Duke? I want a job. What do you do? I don't do anything. You're really talented. What do you do? I was born with an occupation. Do I make you nervous? I've never been around anyone like you before. Midgets? Oh, I wouldn't call them that. Dwarfs. That doesn't sound very nice either. The only two names I can think of. Well, you guys are real small. I mean, uh, up real close, you're still real small. I got a friend that raises Great Danes. The dogs are taller than he is. Why don't you sit down? You're a pretty lady. No strings attached. I don't fool around with regular-sized women. The Duke's not here. He went on ahead up the States Bureau to suck things up. 
What's the matter, lady? You may not believe this, but I'm running away from home. You're kidding. Aren't you a little old? I had to wait for everybody to die so I could do it. Listen, why don't you go on up to Statesboro tomorrow? But don't tell them you do nothing. Make something up. Duke's always said the only difference between the truth and a lie is one's the truth and one's a lie. <laughs> He's a philosopher. Oh. <laughs> the show doesn't start till 8 o'clock tonight. I'm serious about a job. I could walk around being tall. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you Duke's trailer. If you sober, you'll have a lovely talk. It's open. <coughs> yeah? I'm Mary Flynn, and I... You, you from the SPCA? Well, no. the elephant is being fed just plenty, and she's dropping it all over left field. Double animals are being put in single cages only during the mating season. Go see for yourself. Well, I'm not from the SPCA. I want a job with your circus. Secretary? Bookkeeper? You better go see the telephone company. The fact is, uh, I'm running off with the circus, and I need your consent, and you can't deny it, because it's a matter of life and death, sort of. You know, it's usually kids that run after a circus. Well, I don't believe in age discrimination. What the hell are you doing this? Uh, hand me those pants. Why does anyone? Well, some people want to pull up stakes, I suppose. Yes, that's it. Yeah, some want to avoid responsibility. Some are in trouble with the law. No. Some think it's fun. Well, it is and it isn't. Uh, what's your pleasure? Oh, no, I don't drink. You mean you don't want to drink now or you don't drink at all? I don't drink at all. I don't trust people who don't drink as they usually drink. Uh, touch of the elephant's curse. You a uh, acrobat or something? You, you ride horses? I've been taking care of my father for several years. He just passed away. Well, we don't have any fathers here need taken care of. And you're not sexy. I beg your pardon? If you were sexy, I'd keep you around because I'm what you call a visual person. Oh. But you're not. I uh, know. I may be a lot of things, but I'm not sexy. I never was sexy. I don't even know how to be sexy. I have often been complimented on my appearance. Appearances to the mind are of three kinds. Things either are what they appear to be, or they neither are nor appear to be, or they are and do not appear to be. Rightly to aim in all these cases is the wise man's task. Epictetus. 
Died 50 years after Christ. Without nearly the reputation. <clears throat> sure you don't want a drink? No, thank you. <laughs> okay. This isn't exactly a class circus. Oh, it's rotten. I mean, it's not like the ones I saw when I was a little girl. Costumes all faded and ripped. Your lion has the mange. She's getting shots. They're not working. Why the hell did you come here in the first place? Go find a circus when you need one. Your father's death really got to you, didn't it? No, my own did. Nothing inside me is moving. When I got up this morning, all I could think of was making a tray. Huh. Well, there are two possibilities, but I don't think you're right for either one. That's uh, Priscilla. She's a flying princess. Hey, tighten that rigging. We had four. One of the girls fell a couple of weeks ago. She landed on her feet, ironically enough, but it didn't help her. Well, I'm deathly afraid of heights, and I don't have the experience for that. Uh, uh, Mr. Royal, uh, you, you said there were two openings? I don't think the other will match your breeding, ma'am. Well, could I be the, the judge of that? I mean, I'll take the second position, whatever it is, as long as it doesn't involve physical danger. And no athletics. I'm not good at those. And uh, I could never do anything in front of a crowd. You're a real daredevil. Ah. Uh, God, it stinks. Oh, I keep telling them to use deodorant, but they won't listen. You gotta <coughs> feed them, wash them, and clean up after. I feel dizzy. Oh, it'll be that way the first couple of days. They don't care much for your smell either. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Are you Jesse? Yeah. Well, Mr. Duke Royal told me to see you and fill out an application. Application for what? I have a job cleaning cages. You look like an algebra teacher. Duke meets a lot of women in his off hours, you know what I mean. Sometimes he promises some of them jobs. As if they're anxious to get into show business, and, and some of them take them up on it. Never lasts more than a week. First of all, I didn't meet Mr. Royal that way. And second, if I wanted to be in show business, I wouldn't start here. Per se. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, what is that? Corn beef hash. May I have some more? Finish that first. It's got poison in it. Uh, pardon me, may I sit here with you? <clears throat> may I? May you what? May I sit with you? It's a free country. My name is Mary Flynn. I joined the circus this morning. I'm looking forward to meeting you all. Would you like to meet now? Well, that's okay. I'm bad with names. They don't take the outsiders quickly. Sometimes they don't take to them at all. Yeah, 
with the spa hot tea. Spa hot tea with you. why I never got a cat. Mr. Royal. Mr. Royal, I'm sorry, but I don't do cages. Forget it. You're fired. You should have been working two hours ago. At five o'clock in the morning? Pack your things. Oh, please, Mr. Royal. Get moving, boys. Practice those elephants. Will you get lost, ma'am? You don't really want to be here. Mr. Royal, I, I want to go back in those cages more than any place else in the whole world. I, I want to be in those cages uh, more than in, in Paris, France. I want to be in those cages more than in a taffeta dress, the Empire State Building, uh, dime store lipsticks, uh, uh, bread baking, uh, a soap with perfume in it, more than a real clean filling station bathroom when you need it badly? Nope. More than Christmas Eve? Nope. Mr. Royal, uh, when I was a little girl, my... my favorite thing in the world, I mean the whole world, when I had it, I couldn't even think of anything else, it was a chocolate sundae with vanilla ice cream, whole the whipped cream, chopped almonds, and not one but a whole bunch of maraschino cherries. Now, I want to get back in those cages more than a chocolate sundae with vanilla ice cream, whole the whipped cream, chopped almonds, and a whole bunch of maraschino cherries. Now you're in the circus. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, I have work to do. Mr. Royal. Excuse me for being rude, but you're a bastard. Hey, Rodriguez, give me one of your horses, will you? I'm all through with mine, and I don't leave it loafing on the job. Hello. Hi. Everything's just fine in the cages. There's been some nice cooling breezes come through.
ever since I got here, all you've done is scream. You scream, your husband screams, your brother screams, everybody screams. I haven't had a decent night's sleep since, since I don't know when. I love my husband. It shows. You want to be friends? Okay. You nice lady. You nice lady. Good. Kind. So? Work! <laughs> you! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep <your stupid>. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to meet you. Hi. Oh, how are you? Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Thank you again. I didn't know you had it in you. You have a way of making people feel really good about themselves. Oh, thank you. So, you were a daddy's girl. No, I was a mama's girl until she died. Then I was a daddy's girl. It's not a difficult transition once you know the basics. Ever been married? Once, almost, when I was 19. And again, when I was 30. <laughs> No, thank you. But it would have meant moving away. I used to think the worst thing in the world anybody could be was a thankless child. I've read a little Shakespeare myself. Oh. My parents were infirm. Infirm? Yes, they couldn't do anything for themselves. Oh, you mean they knew a sucker when they saw one? Mr. Royal, Southerners have a long tradition of taking care of their own. You realize if it hadn't been for slavery, the South would be famous for grit. <laughs> uh, can I come in? Oh, you mean I can't come in? Well, I don't know you at all. Huh. I've got my teeth, I fear God, and I've had my shots. <laughs> uh, did you go into town today? Yes. Have your hair fixed? Mm hmm. Buy new clothes? Yes. Why? Well, I wanted you to notice me. I am noticing you. Good night, Mr. Royal. <laughs> Good 
That's as bad as kicking a dog. Midnight, we went right out, we found this preacher, and he married us right then. And, you know, his wife took our photo with the Polaroid camera. And the next morning, Duke says it was all just a joke because he was drunk. And it wasn't even legal because we uh, hadn't gotten a marriage license, but as far as I'm concerned, it is legal. I mean, it's what you say to each other that matters, you know? Hmm? I can't just wish something like that away. You know, we got bill collectors after us from four states. Duke doesn't seem worried. Well, Duke says life is a circus. You know, he just happens to own a real one. <laughs> Duke's got designs on you, I see him. Mostly what I get is tidbits, but I can't complain because he never promises more than he delivers. You know, I can't control what people do, but should you and Duke ever get together, you know, he won't be a friend of mine. I have to put up with his foolishness, but I don't have to put up with yours. Just a little under the weather. It happens all the time. Can I get you a doctor? No, no, I'll be fine. <laughs> Growing pains. Ah, man. There's something the matter with Louie. He can hardly breathe. Oh, Louie gets sick a lot. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Some kind of uh, respiratory ailment a lot of midgets get. <clears throat> It started up a year ago. Well, we have to do something to help him. There's nothing to be done. Louie's sick and you couldn't care less. Oh, gee, of course I care. But people get sick every day, Mary. There's nothing I can do to stop the process. At the risk of losing my job, if that's what you call cleaning cages. I have never in my life met anyone as offensive and callous and insensitive as you are. Uh-uh. As you.
Want some air? <laughs> How you feeling? Well, not so good. If I was your size, I'd feel twice as bad. The heart pumps the blood too fast. A lot of us get it. We're an exclusive group. I'll help you, Louie. I'll take care of you. I can take care of myself. I looked after both my parents. Fixed their meals, made sure they took the medicine. Even helped them to the bathroom. They wouldn't have made it without me. They didn't make it. <laughs> I still make you nervous, don't I? No. Uh, yes. Mary, will you kiss me? Nothing long or drawn out. Just on the cheek. I like that. I had a girlfriend once in the fourth grade. She kept growing and I stayed put. By the seventh grade, she wasn't interested in me anymore. Baska shot her husband. Is he dead? I don't think so. promotion. What kind of a promotion? Well, the mayor of Jackson's coming to the circus tomorrow night, and Olivia Probashka has just been booked for attempted murder in possession of a deadly weapon. So, I'm promoting you. But, but I can't do that. Sure you can. No, you've got to be agile and, and, and quick and coordinated and, and athletic and do, do, please. Please. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> George, this is Mary Flynn. Mary Flynn. Sergei, Mary. Ivan, Mary, Mary, Ivan. Duke, they don't understand a word you're saying. They respond to the authority in my voice. All right, now, there's no such thing as a circus without an acrobat, right? And you can't have an acrobatic act without a pretty girl. So I brought you a new pretty girl. New lady. New lady. Duke, this is crazy. Olivia. Olivia. Uh, Olivia. Olivia. Oh, it's oh, Olivia. Olivia. Oh, 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 No. Oh, 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 no, I can't. I can't. I would. I would if I could, but I can't. Now, I have made my decision, and my decision is final. And All you have to do is keep your back straight and your arms and legs loose. They'll do the rest for you. What's the matter? Don't you have any guts? Well, yes, I have guts. I also have bad posture. Hey, hey, hey. You think I'm going to let you get hurt? Well, I... Now, now. You stand there. That's it. 
Now keep your whole body loose and don't be frightened. Okay, George? Okay, Don. Relax. Relax. My, have fun. Oh, you bastard. Let her go. Hoop. Now, isn't that better than shoveling manure? Gets. Your encouragement means the world to me. Hey, Mary. I'd like to get together with you. Your timing is impeccable. Assaulting uh, artists of the teeterboard, uh, the great Probashka.
Hi. Hi. Hey, uh, Louie told me you didn't eat any supper. The idea of facing the hot table nauseated me. Well, how about a steak? A big, juicy steak. No, thanks. Right here in town. We can wear dress-up clothes. I know a real nice place. You wouldn't recognize me in a tie. Uh, why the hell not? Because things are nice just the way they are. Well, you're an attractive woman and one hell of an acrobat. Maybe some other time. Uh, look, I've never begged a woman to go out with me in my life, and I'm not starting now, so if the answer is no, it'll stay no. Fine. Open the door! Mary? When I was a boy, the thing I wanted most in the world was a Lionel electric train with an engine in front and a red caboose on the back and a dozen passenger and freight cars in between. And I wanted it to cross over lots of little bridges and go up steep mountains and through tunnels and have plastic trees all over. And when it came back to downtown, this big wooden arm would come down in front of the tracks and bells would go off and the, so that the cars would stop. And when the train went past, the arm would lift and the bells would stop and the cars would go on again. And I'd like to buy you a steak more than that. Makes you fat. I'm not fat. No. <laughs> Jesse says you're uh, having financial problems. Well, the circus is having financial problems, but I, I'm personally doing fine. You gonna close down? When things get rough, you disassociate yourself from them, don't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I tail in and out one place or another as long as I can remember. When I was 14, my mother got cancer. And the day after she told me, I packed my bags and ran away from home. Now that sounds awful to you, doesn't it? But I didn't want to watch her die. So I kissed her. I said goodbye. And I held her. That was real hard. And then just left. Before she did. Jesse says when I die, I'm going to have to rent people to come to my funeral. <laughs> because I don't have many acquaintances. <laughs> she says I'm like a bad dog. There's no reason to keep it, except every time you go to put it out, you change your mind to something. That dog. <laughs> I like you, Duke. Give me five reasons. I, I 
can't even give you one. See what I mean about the dog? <laughs> You live by your own rules. You have no sense of duty. You accept the inevitable. You never break promises because you don't make any in the first place. <laughs> There's a lesson there somewhere. You don't like me too much, Mary. You're a fine lady and I just have that nasty habit of disappearing in a puff of smoke. Duke, I haven't, I haven't danced since I don't... But there's nobody else on the floor. Nobody's going to care if you step on my feet. <laughs> oh! Jesse. She told you that? Well, she said you went to a minister. A minister? <laughs> For fifty dollars, he would have been anything in the world you wanted him to be. <laughs> For twenty-five more, his wife would have joined him. <laughs> ah, no, we, we had no license, no uh, blood tests, nothing. Well, we were both drunk. Oh. Yeah, so drunk that I said her part and she said mine. <laughs> Why did you do it? Oh, I don't know, just to see what it felt like to get married. So. Didn't you like it? Mm hmm. I didn't feel any different afterward. You know, I like I like things that uh, make you feel different when they're over. <laughs> Do you love her? Well, <clears throat> I haven't told her so. Yeah, um, what if I uh, married her? Huh? Well, I guess I'd smile and say fine. And if I didn't? Well, I'd smile and say fine. And then I'd say, what I want most in this whole world, more than a chocolate sundae, is you. Jesse asked me not to do this if I, if I wanted her friendship. This would be the first time in my life I ever intentionally made an enemy. Why are you doing it? Because I, I want to be close to you. And I know it'll never happen outside of bed. So I, I ask everyone's forgiveness and your enthusiastic consent. slip everybody next week. The horses are sold, and the zoo at Fort Worth said they'd take care of one of the elephants. You know Bertha, if I could get her there. Trucks are spoken for, and a Baptist church bought the tent. I'd like it if you stayed on to the end. Just a few more days. Okay. Good. What will you do after that? Well, I, I'll go home, I guess. Maybe I'll bleach my hair. I used to see all these blonde ladies walking around like someone told them it was all right for them to be sexy, but not me. I always waited for somebody else to tell me things were okay. Well, I'm going to stop rejecting my best ideas. 
What about you, Duke? Oh, maybe Canada. <sighs> Never been there. Sounds like a place to have a good time. Duke, can I ask you a question? Sure. We just had a good time, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, didn't we? I said, yeah. Well, doesn't that mean anything? Like what? I, I don't know, something. Making love is about the only thing I haven't got bored with sooner or later. <laughs> I always wanted to marry the man I felt close to in bed. I thought that was a signal for the preacher to walk in. I wanted to marry Ernest Hemingway, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I care about you, Mary. You're a fine lady. You're the best lady. Come to Savannah, Duke. I know everybody in town. You could get a good job. Hey, now. That's the sturdiest idea I've heard in a long time. <laughs> uh, we could tell them you're a, a retiring military man. Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, you are, sort yeah. of. Yeah. You go to church and I'd go to a bar. <laughs> Come for a few days and see. Well, you never know till you try it, right? That's right. You think they let me in the country club? Oh, well, you'd uh, have to dress up a bit. <laughs> I play golf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hit those dumb little balls five miles in and out of those dumb little holes. Oh. <laughs> Might be fun to be mayor. Duke, how did you ever get involved in the circus in the first place? Well, I tell you, I was running around one day, you know, nothing much in my mind, and I met this elephant. <laughs> stupid to love somebody that doesn't love you. Why do you do it, Jesse? Because every other man I meet is dull by comparison. I don't like you, Mary. I don't care for you a bit. So you just stay on your side and I'll stay on mine. Attention, please. We have a little quiet here. Shut up! Saturday night will be our last show. I don't mean our last show for a while. I mean our last show for good. The Duke Royal Circus has become a non-profit organization. And that's not what... I intended it to be. You'll be paid severance for one week, not two. I'm sorry. Charlie Vickworth of the Vickworth Carnival has agreed to come up here Saturday to talk to anyone who might be interested in joining his group. He's a good man, or I wouldn't have asked him by. The Engel brothers are also looking for people, and they'll be in Sarasota in a month. I tried to sell. I thought I could find someone with better ideas than mine. I found out that it's easier to 
sell the, the Brooklyn Bridge or Cleopatra's earrings in the circus. I'm sorry. It won't be easy, I know that. Someone I know once said, uh, go find a circus when you need one. Well, still a few of them left. you something to eat. <laughs> Got all the good stuff, I see. <laughs> Duke made an announcement at dinner tonight. It's Saturday night and the gig's up. Mm. What are you going to do? Doctor said I should go to Arizona. Better air. I have a sister in Phoenix. I called her and asked if I could stay with her until I got a place of my own. She hemmed and hawed about not much room and a bunch of kids. So then I told her I had almost $50,000 saved up. I do, too. Then she says, well, come on. I'll have that room repainted before you arrive. Nobody rich ever dies alone. <laughs> I have a big house in Savannah. There's plenty of rooms. I'd be pleased to have you stay there. I only got a little time. I'd rather watch my sister fade away than you. Shula's leaving tonight, so you can help out in the act until Saturday, if you would. Okay. I've been in the circus since I've been 15 years old. People on the outside won't associate with little people. Here, they pay to see them. Now I gotta go out and deal with them in their own world. Oh, I'm not talking about being small. That doesn't bother me. It's just all their seriousness, that's all. I'll think of something to make them laugh. I can always drop my pants if I have to. It's a cheap joke, but it always works. <laughs> Here we are. Now for a little powder and we're all set. Hi, Jesse. You issued uh, Duke an engraved invitation to visit Savannah. Move into the family plantation. I think that's part of it. I love him too, Jesse. I think we could be happy together. <sighs> you gonna take him to your garden parties? Duke ain't very good at balancing teacups while standing up. I don't think the upper crust is gonna get his drift. I'm sorry, Jesse. You sorry? I can't be sorry. You start trouble everywhere you go, don't you? Mary Flynn, little two shoes. But you know what I say. Behind every goody two shoes is a real bitch. People like you scare me. I mean, you go around wrecking other people's lives and you don't even have the courtesy to sweat. They look like they just got out of the shower. I'm betting against Savannah because he belches too loud for your kind of people. Why don't you just cut out my heart? Showtime. You look just beautiful, Henrietta.
great little midget. Thank you all for coming, folks. You tell your friends and relations, Tuscaloosa and Democrats, that we'll be there next week for two days. And then Montgomery and Birmingham, we'll see you all again real, real soon. You'll be all right, Louis. I'll live a hundred years. Yeah. Hey, Louis. Something wrong? Something the matter? What is it? You can tell me. I got no more time for you, Duke. Oh, you don't, huh? I'm sorry. Well, maybe you just damn well better find some. Maybe I can't. Maybe you ain't worth it. Hey, Louis. Crying out loud, this isn't you. You're sleazy, Duke, and you're dirty, too. Ground in dirt! <laughs> you aren't good enough for Mary. You haven't got the class. Well, you think highly of me, don't you? I think nothing of you. I've watched you steal a lot, Duke. But this time I'm going to tell the cashier. Oh, come on, I can only speak English. Mary tells me you're going to go home with her. She thinks you're going to marry her. She asked me to come, Louis. She asked me to come visit. Well, maybe she makes mistakes like everybody else. When it comes to men, she has no frame of reference. Do something charitable for a change. Oh, yeah? Well, what might that be? Send her home alone. Maybe I just don't want to do that. Yeah, sure. You'll spend a month. Then you'll disappear. Probably in the middle of the night. Or when she's out having her hair done. That's the way you do things. You leave a note with no forwarding address. It'll break her up. Scatter your junk somewhere else. You love her. Don't you? You love her more than just a friend. Jeez, I'm sorry, Louie. When I was younger, they used to joke about putting me on a curtain stretcher. They'd laugh, say how it might make me bigger. Ever since I've met Mary, I thought a lot about that dumb stretcher. Wondering if it'd really work. She's a tender woman. She breaks easy like eggs. I could handle her softly. I could make her laugh. Send her funny cards like, congratulations on your bar mitzvah. You could never do anything like that, Duke. You'd take until you were full, then you'd push your chair back from the table. Don't be so sure. You'd belch real loud first, though. <laughs> you only got one thing on me, Duke Royal. About two feet. <laughs> Louis, what I want to tell you is, all those years of uh, people looking at you like you were a freak, and you never got mad or impatient. Hell no. You never lost your temper. You never said a hard word to anyone. <laughs> it ain't no big thing. Grace than any man I've ever known. The big tent's packed and on the truck, and people are getting ready to move out. Oh, mm. Duke, you are going to love it in Savannah. Oh, Mary, I'm not coming to Savannah. <laughs> But, um, but you said you'd try. Yeah, yeah, I thought I would. I really thought I would. I even told Jesse I was leaving with you. 
But then all of a sudden today, I started to picture myself wearing striped suits and wingtip shoes, working some job, waiting for a two-week vacation each year. Ugh, nothing fit. The suits looked silly and the shoes were a joke. No, I'd just well, as soon join uh, a monastery. Duke, uh, um, Duke, why, why don't you come for a few days? I mean, the house is large and, and comfortable, and there's a big yard out back. Do you, do you like to grow things? Oh, come on, Mary. Oh, um, you and I never really were a match, were we, Duke? In, in the, uh, forever and ever way, I mean. Oh, God, listen to me. I still think fairy tales. I love you, Duke. I have a feeling you're, you're going to say something like, um, why don't you go home and find a nice man and get married? Something like that. Something like that. Well, that, that's what I want to do. I thought you were going to join me. No harm in asking. Ask and ye shall receive. John 16, I think. Well... John was full of it. Oh, I ought to love you, Mary. But I'm real stupid about some things. I don't much like responsibility. And love seems to have all kinds of it. No, no, that's not it. Just that I think if I ever let myself go, it would and get close. It would feel so good, I'd want more. It would be like dope. I'd need it all the time. And then what if I suddenly couldn't get it one day? What? So I keep a distance. I, when I see it coming, I cross to the other side of the street. I'm missing everything, huh? Ah, well, we all screw up somewhere. What about Jessie? Uh, she's so damn loyal. I question her judgment, but I've got to admire her endurance. I don't want to leave you, Duke. You're not Jesse, Mary. You're not the kind of woman to follow a wild man all over Canada. Correct me if I'm wrong. There you go, Mike. Pancho. Pancho. Good luck to you. Thank you, Jim. Silver. Yeah? Good luck. Here you go, Blossom. Best cook I ever knew. Three years and no one died. See you, Duke. What are you going to do? Duke wants to go up to Canada. He says there's a lot of mining going on up there. <laughs> What's Duke know about mining? Same as he knew about circuses. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Remember. Rodriguez. You take it easy now. Well, I'm going to visit my daughter. She's living in New Mexico. Maybe I'll become a cowboy. <laughs> you look more like an Indian. Jesse, you be sure you keep him out of jail. If he gets in, you be sure you visit him regularly. Okay. <laughs> you could. Nobody was angry. Did you see that? Huh? You just take us a ride up to Canada. And we'll find something real thrilling to do. 
This is not doing anything. This is real thrilling, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're going to dig us up a gold mine. <laughs> I can get me a mink coat. I need diamonds big as an egg. And that don't work out, we'll just find something else to do. Yeah. I won't never be further away in the holler. Mm -hmm. Did I ever tell you about my purple sweater, Jesse? No. Well, my mother made me a purple sweater <laughs> once. It had this wide green stripe right across the chest. It was the ugliest damn sweater I ever saw. But she made me wear it. I wore it for two years, and I still hate it. Well, I guess. Purple and green. <laughs> and then one day, I put it on, and all of a sudden, it seemed like the most wonderful sweater I've ever seen. And when I got too big for it, I was so disappointed. So I kept it in a drawer for a long time, several years. I never knew what happened to that sweater. Are you saying you'd like me to make you another one? No. Well, what are you talking about? I don't know. I came in. Well, it sure looks prettier on you now. First thing I'm going to do when I get home is give it to the Salvation Army, along with a whole closet full of others. <laughs> Thank you, Duke. You're a strange one. That's the nicest thing anyone ever said to me. If you get to Savannah, will you look me up? Well, miracles do happen. If they change one sex into another, you could change your mind. <laughs> I'm going to take the bus to Statesboro to pick up my car. Goodbye, Duke. Bye, Jesse. Oh, come on, give me a hug. Hard feelings, what do you say? Everybody has misunderstandings now and then. Part of being human. But a friend's fourth, you can't fight with them. I mean, you helped us out, and you really did, and I, for one, am grateful. We never could have made it without you. Duke and I were going to British Columbia. British Columbia, huh? Yeah. Duke says that's virgin territory. He and I might not be talking about the same thing. <laughs> well, we're going to give it a chance, you know. I mean, if it don't work out, there's always Alaska. Never known until you try it, that's what Duke says. <laughs> well, Duke's a philosopher. Good luck, Jesse. Thanks, Mary. Thanks a lot. <laughs> That 
that was the best time I ever had in my whole life. Hey, Duke. What are you going to do if you run into another elephant? Roll over and play dead. Jay Savannah. Good morning. And here are some announcements of local interest. The Kiwanis Club will hold its semi-annual businessman's breakfast tomorrow at 8 a.m. at the Little Taste of Europe restaurant on Highway 9. Dorothy Webster is hosting a garden party for the ladies' auxiliary at her home this afternoon. I'm sorry, Mrs. Webster. I won't be able to attend your garden party this afternoon. Emily Norton, president of the Savannah Junior League, has postponed the annual election from this Wednesday to next because of a death in the family. And I won't be able to attend the Junior League election either because of a life in the family. Okay, Aunt Helen. I'm sorry if I caused you any trouble, but I had to get away from this house. I needed some time for myself, so I took it. Well, weren't there any phones where you were, Mary? One dime is cheap enough if you really cared about anyone except yourself. Oh, you used to be a fine girl, Mary. We used to be so proud of you. Well, I hope you still will be. You used to have such charm. Ever since your father died, you seem to have developed a mind of your own. <laughs> as soon as I get cleaned up, I'm going into town, have my hair cut and bleached, and I am moving to Atlanta. Atlanta? Why are you moving to Atlanta? It's bigger. I'll say. It's full of crime. <laughs> well, if I don't like it, I will move to New York. Mary Grace, are you in some sort of trouble? Of course not. Oh, Mary, something's very wrong. I can see it in your face. Your eyes never did lie very well. Mary Grace, where have you been? I ran away with the circus. Doesn't everyone? What? <laughs> 